Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. I rise for a point of personal privilege for comments. Please. I rise today because I think it's important to acknowledge how this body has impacted my family and our journey, along with many others who are just like me. I don't know how many of you know this, but a few weeks ago I learned that, against all odds, I am pregnant. Many of you know that I've had kind of a rough journey with fertility. I had my first miscarriage more than 13 years ago, and I have been pregnant many times since then. Twice I was lucky enough to successfully carry to term, and I have two beautiful, healthy little boys. But two years ago, while I was campaigning for this Senate seat, I became pregnant with what we later determined was a non-viable pregnancy. It was a pregnancy that we had been trying for, and we were heartbroken over it. But now, I wish I could tell you otherwise, um, but after numerous ultrasounds and blood draws, we have determined that my pregnancy is once again not progressing and is not viable. And once again, I have scheduled an appointment to terminate my pregnancy. I don't think people should have to justify their abortions, but I'm choosing to talk about why I made this decision, because I want us to be able to have meaningful conversations about the reality of how the work that we do in this body impacts people in the real world. For the last 12 years, I have worked both as an ER nurse and a nurse practitioner in a women's health clinic, and that experience informs the understanding that I have of my situation. Pregnancy, intended or otherwise, increase your risk for just about every health problem that a person can have. And that includes diabetes and high blood pressure and blood clots, anxiety, depression, arrhythmias, ischemic stroke, and I could, I could go on. Pregnancy is not a health-neutral condition. Certainly, pregnancy carries more risk than abortion, which is a, a very low-risk procedure. And I say this not to try to discourage people from pregnancy. I'm so glad that I accepted those risks and carried my children. I just recognize them because I think we have to be honest about the balance of risk and reward and why abortion can often be the right health care choice. I don't know how many of you have been unfortunate enough to experience a miscarriage before, but I am not interested in going through it unnecessarily. And right now, the safest and most appropriate treatment for me and the treatment that I choose is abortion. But the laws that this legislature has passed has interfered with my ability to do that, along with countless others. And I, I want to explain what I mean and why I'm still pregnant as I address all of you today, despite having known about the unavoidable demise of my pregnancy and despite having been to the abortion clinic on Friday where they were equipped and prepared to perform my abortion. First, I was required to have another ultrasound at the abortion clinic, as all patients seeking abortion are required to do in Arizona. An ultrasound that I absolutely did not need to have. I, I didn't have an ultrasound because my doctor thought I needed one. I had one because legislation has forced me to do that. An invasive transvaginal ultrasound that I didn't want or need to have performed by someone who didn't want to have to do it. I am safe and loved and protected in my marriage but I cannot imagine how inappropriate that would be for a victim of sexual assault or for someone who has an abusive or coercive relationship with their partner, another unwanted vaginal penetration, but this time by the state, by the people who are commissioned to protect us. Then I got to sit through an exhaustive list of absolute disinformation that was read off to me. I was told that there were alternatives to abortion, parenting, or adoption among them, as if delivering a healthy baby is an option for me. It is not. My medical provider was forced to tell me multiple things that don't apply to my situation, and some that are just transparently, factually false. And they do this because of laws passed by this legislature in opposition to medical expert testimony and advice. And from where I sat, the only reason I had to hear those things was in a, a cruel and really uninformed attempt by outside forces to, to shame and coerce and frighten me into making a different decision other than the one that I knew was right for me. There's no one-size-fits-all script for people seeking abortion care, and the legislature doesn't have any right to assign one. I, I'm a perfect example of why this relationship should be between patients and providers. All that the legislature has done is to nurture distrust and confusion in the relationship between patients and providers for people who are vulnerable enough. It's not the job of the medical provider to try to talk a patient out of a decision that they feel comfortable with. Providers want patients to be informed, but not coerced. 
At no point in either of my experiences at abortion clinics did I feel pressure from the provider to get an abortion. I, I felt compassion and kindness and, and empathy and understanding. The, the only guilt that I felt was for the providers who was forced to say things that they shouldn't have to say because of us. After the mandatory ultrasound and the mandatory disinformation, I, I'm then gonna have to wait at least another 24 hours after my appointment before I can have a procedure. The last time that I had an abortion, I started to miscarry the night before it was scheduled to take place. And I was denied a procedure in the hospital because I was deemed not critical enough. In spite of the fact that my embryo had died and that my miscarriage had stalled, which left me with retained products of conception, the clauses for emergencies aren't good enough. These laws can serve to intimidate doctors and it muddies the waters when they're trying to make complex decisions in situations that are really volatile. I had been bleeding and passing huge clots for hours, but I wasn't bleeding out. And I was still pregnant. So I was offered medication to make me start bleeding again and told that I could have a procedure when I had bled enough. A waiting period is often totally inappropriate and potentially dangerous. Doctors and patients should be making those determinations, not legislators who don't have to suffer through the consequences themselves. The next day, I went to the abortion clinic where I was able to get the care that I needed. And two weeks later, abortions shut, cl clinics shut down in the wake of Roe. And I wouldn't have been able to get my procedure. Arizonans really agree that decisions should be between providers and patients and that the legislature should stay out of it. We know what happens to patients who seek abortion for any reason and aren't able to get one. We have lots of data on the subject, and uh, notably Dr. Foster's turnaway study, but there's others. Those individuals who are denied abortion are more likely to be victims of domestic violence, more likely to be evicted, more likely to file for bankruptcy, and their living children are more likely to have developmental delays. They have more long-term health consequences, and they're less likely to be able to afford the basic needs for their households. And that's a short and incomplete list of the poor outcomes that families face when their choices are taken away from them. Generally speaking, people seek abortion for the same reason that I did. I'm choosing abortion because I'm pregnant and for reasons that I should not have to explain to you or to the church or to the state of Arizona, I need to not be pregnant anymore. That's the best outcome for me. Now, I understand that there are a lot of sensitive feelings surrounding pregnancy and that there are philosophical questions that people cannot agree on. But leaders and experts have been talking about those things for years in this country, and if doctors and political leaders and advocacy organizations and religious organizations and faith groups and scientists have not been able to come to any consensus about the answers to these complicated questions, then I think we can all agree that the right people for that job are not here in the Arizona legislature. Arizonans deserve the freedom and the liberty to make those decisions for themselves. I will never try to force someone to have an abortion. And nobody should ever try to prevent me from having mine. My experiences in this space, both as a provider and as a patient, have led me to believe that this legislature has failed the people of Arizona in the laws that restrict and dictate abortion and in the resources that it cuts and strangles and denies at every opportunity. I'm, I'm really grateful that I am privileged to be able to make the right decision for myself and my family. I caught my pregnancy early. I can afford all those doctor visits. I can take time off work when I need to. But I call on this legislative body to, to pass laws that make sure every Arizona has, Arizona has the opportunity to make decisions that are right for them. Our decision making should be grounded in expert testimony and in consensus from both the medical community and from constituents and free from political posturing and partisan bias, but that's not what I see happening. So I, I truly hope that Arizonans have the opportunity to weigh in on abortion on the ballot in November. Uh, we know that the majority of Arizonans support the right to abortion, and if we can't operate in that reality in this chamber, then it is critical that everyone have the opportunity for their voices to be heard elsewhere. I stand with those who have had to grapple with and navigate Arizona's restrictive laws surrounding abortion in a time when the decisions being made were complicated enough. I'm with them. I appreciate them. I am them. Thank you for listening to me today. That's all I have to say. Thank you.